What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video I'm going to talk about the tools I use every day as a software developer. If you guys are into coding, entrepreneurship, tech, startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. That's all we talk about here on this channel. And I'm going to go ahead and just jump right into it. So the first tool is going to be Jira, which is used for like task and project management, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably heard of if you're in coding bootcamp or if you're looking into coding or if you've been reading job descriptions for software developer roles. Jira is probably a big one that you guys have seen on there. And in Jira, we do everything from like issue tracking to uh, bug fixes to assigning work to ourselves to planning our work for the current sprint and then also showing the progress of those tasks throughout the sprint. Every day when we first come in and start our stand up session, we are going through Jira. The Jira board is the first thing I look at every single morning so that myself, the team, our leads, and then also our business people all have a clear understanding or a look into the work that we're doing on the team. So Jira is a huge one for tracking and managing like different tasks and just the overall work itself on the project. So the second tool that I use every single day is kind of in line with Jira. I think it's a product of Jira's, but it's called Confluence. And so that's probably another very common one you guys have heard before. Um, and again, Confluence is a documentation space for software, essentially is how I understand it. Um, so this is where you keep all the solution design documents, technical documents, almost like a wiki or a Wikipedia for your software. So anytime somebody creates a new feature or if something new gets added or implemented, if a new library or package is used, inside the system somebody is going to likely make a solution design document talking about what they added what it does how it fits into the overall scheme of other systems at the company so you guys have probably seen these like architectural diagrams that kind of show these different you know systems pointing to one another and showing this workflow of how the overall system kind of comes together and everything works so all this type of stuff documentation is housed inside of confluence and anytime for example, if I'm doing anything new and I need to document it for other team members or if I need to like read comments and feedback from business people who go in and actually leave comments on tickets, issues, bugs, things like that, um, Confluence is a great place to go in and like further explain or like show work and create documents for other people to go read in case they need to go behind your work, use a service that you implemented, or if you need to go figure out how something was built or how something works, then Confluence is where I go on a daily basis to pretty much do that. So the next tool that I use every single day is going to be Postman. Again, this is another common one you guys have probably heard of, but if you haven't, Postman is used to test APIs and likely you're just sending a lot of different HTTP requests. So with Postman, uh, I'm a C-sharp.net developer and I pretty much only work on backend stuff. So we use Postman to test everything from if services are running to if we're getting the correct responses to like getting our all tokens and things like that. Like there's just a million different reasons why Postman is amazing. Um, Cause again, it, it just gives you a very easy way to test different endpoints, different services, different systems, get quick feedback on error messages if something is going wrong and likely well, for me, I'm using Postman every single day when I'm debugging my code. So I'll have my actual code running in Visual Studio and then I'm making my calls through Postman and that's how I'm pretty much doing my debugging. Hope you guys are getting some value out of this. If you are, let me know down below. Leave me a comment if you guys have had some experience with these tools already or leave me a like. I super appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one, which is going to be Azure Functions is another big tool that I use every single day. I guess you can call this one more like a service than a tool, but Azure Functions are serverless functions that are provided by Microsoft's Azure Cloud, and we use them to pretty much kind of speed up our development and also keep our code very clean. A lot of times we use Azure Functions to pretty much stop our system from being bogged down with a bunch of unnecessary code that does something completely different than what our system is meant to do. Also, uh, it helps speed up response times too. Like, yes. There's been a lot of backlash about serverless functions and how slow they are to start, which I completely agree with. They do take a very long time to actually start up because your server has to actually start up and actually run your function and things like that before it can start receiving calls. 
So I understand the downside of that, but once they're actually up and running, it does help our system to actually be performant. So we use a lot of Azure functions. Next tool that I use on a daily basis is actually a free Google Chrome extension called Grepper. So Grepper is a free Google Chrome extension that allows you to grab code snippets from other people who have Googled the same things that you're Googling. So this works for pretty much any language that you want to use. JavaScript, C Sharp are the main ones that I use, but I know that they have answers for Ruby and a bunch of other languages as well. So essentially you download this uh, Chrome extension into your browser and when you turn it on, whenever you Google something related to coding or a certain language, if there's been any Grepper users that have submitted answers or solutions to that same thing you're Googling, it'll pop up at the top of your Google search. And a lot of times this helps me kind of get to the answers quicker sometimes without having to necessarily go and like dig through a bunch of different articles and click on them and read through them and see how the approaches are being used. Um, not 100% like does it work all the time. Obviously it depends on what you're doing, but a lot of times it really does help save me time when I'm just trying to do something like very quick or I forget what a method is called or something like that. It's just a very, very handy tool to have in your browser. Next up, we have Visual Studio, which is the IDE that I use to develop in C Sharp and .NET. You guys have probably already used something like Visual Studio Code by now, Sublime or Brackets, some sort of text editor or IDE. So Visual Studio is just another one of those, but specifically it's, it's used a lot for C Sharp uh, development and C and C++ and things like that. I've grown to love Visual Studio. My very first IDE was Eclipse and then, well, I learned Java on Eclipse. And so then I moved over to uh, Visual Studio, which is a very big IDE in terms of a download and how heavy it is on your computer. So uh, depending on how powerful your CPU is and everything, your computer might kind of run slow or Visual Studio might run slow sometimes. I use this every single day. I mean, this is where we literally write all of our code. So I'm using Visual Studio every single day. Another cool tool is one that I found online called ConvertJSON. Um, and like I said, I use this for c .net objects, but this could also work for any other language as well. Essentially what it allows you to do is take a JSON object and copy and paste it into this uh, website and then you can convert it into a proper object for whatever language you're using, whether it's JavaScript, C Sharp, whatever it is. And that helps me out a lot because I have to map a lot of responses from APIs and these responses usually have weird body types and they're set up very strangely sometimes. So instead of having to go through a really huge response and figure out how to map every single property, you can either get a sneak peek of how it's gonna look or sometimes in a best case scenario, you can pretty much convert the entire thing and then just fix or change you know, data types or whatever as you need to. But essentially just by copying and pasting the response from an API into this ConvertJSON website, I can turn it into a proper C Sharp object and then bring that over into Visual Studio, create a class for it, and then just go in and change things from like longs to ints or removing JSON property annotations and changing it to be whatever it needs to be. But essentially it just really helps save a lot of time when mapping objects and doing uh, API work. So convert JSON is a really big one I use all the time. And the last few are just kind of like a suite of tools. I'm not going to spend too much time on. You guys are likely familiar with all of them already, which is pretty much going to be Excel, Google Sheets, Microsoft Teams, and Microsoft Outlook. Because everybody knows what Microsoft Teams is for the most part. It's no different than any other chat pretty much like a Slack or a GroupMe or a WhatsApp, but pretty much just through Microsoft. So it's the way that our teams communicate within the company uh, and communicate with each other from team member to team member. Uh, we use Excel to do like a lot of different reports and to sort a lot of data and information. Um, if we're doing testing, I know that we'll actually put a lot of our responses and calls that we're gonna use for our testing scripts inside of Excel sheets that our QA is using, things like that. Uh, and then Microsoft Outlook is just our email. So you guys know you might be using Google at your job or whatever, but yeah, those are pretty standard. But I just wanted to give you guys kind of a look into some of the things that I'm using on a daily basis uh, as a software engineer at my job. So you guys, if you're on the job hunt or you're finishing boot camp, if you guys want to start getting familiar with certain tools, you can. Not to mention too, that this is just a pretty much overview of the most important tools that I use every single day. And by no means is this like an exclusive tools of everything you need to know as a software developer. It will also depend a lot on your job, guys. So keep that in mind. I hope this gives you guys some more insight. Let me know down in the comment section if this was helpful, if you guys learned anything. What tools are you guys using at your job? Or if you're just starting out in coding, like what tools are you guys learning or using that are helping you out, helping you be more effective and productive? Let me know down in the comment section below. I love chatting it up with you guys. Also down in the description i have a link to my intro to coding boot camp course so make sure you guys check that out it's got everything in there i wish i knew before i went to coding boot camp all it costs is an email address so make sure you guys check that out 
But again, guys, this is Darian with Darian the Dead. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe on the video. It really helps me stay motivated to put this content out for you guys. So this is Darian, guys, Darian the Dev. I'll see you guys next video, all right? Peace.